the game to see the boxing boys. Welcome back, gang, for the first time and hopefully many more to come. Don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel and click on the notifications right here, this little bell, so you can get those emails every time we go. Boxingboys.com live here with Gerald Big Baby Miller winding down on camp 20 rounds. I thought we only hear about things like that from the old time boxes, like 20 rounds? Yeah, I do different. Sometimes we go hours straight, hour 45 minutes straight. You, know. you look so exhausted much. though. I'm tired. I'm tired of shit. You know, a lot of times we do videos with guys, they're like, they talking fresh. I'm beef. I, I leave it in the gym sometimes, man. So, who can say how you throwing 70, 700 and something punches, 800 punches talking about fighting? That's why I work for it. You know, but I think my last couple fights, I've worked more quantity to the quality, you know, right now. I don't I think people have been mistaken for somebody that I don't have punching power all of a sudden. But uh, you look at the last two opponents I've fought, you know, they're not known for being knocked out, you know. Uh, Johan Duopoulos won 11 rounds, beating up on Deontay to finally he got a little tired and Deontay's able to land a power shot on the guy. And he only had a three-week camp for that. And uh, I had him hurt a couple times in the fight, but when I watched the fight with Johan Duopoulos, I had him hurt and I kept him in the game by leaning on him instead of stepping out, the, stepping out of the way. And um, Morris Walk, I just had to wear him down because he was a taller guy. So, you know, I fought a lot of harder opponents, all these guys out there, you know, and um, it was working, man, it was working. So obviously, uh, you're going to be fighting October 6th versus mm -hmm. Thomas Adamant. Correct. We thought you were co-main. Correct. I'm hearing you got pushed to opener. That's what I'm Opening too. telecast because Eddie was able to get Vargas the WBC title to be main event. Then Better Beef got the IBF strap on the co-main. What's up? I heard you wasn't happy. What was your uh, reaction yeah, to hearing I, that I, news? I definitely wasn't happy about that. But guys are getting, getting belts and that's why people ask me why didn't I fight Dylan White and all other crap. That's the reason why. That's another reason why. I can prove to you right there that when you don't have a belt, you get sunk to the side. You know what I mean? Um, Dylan White just another pawn in Eddie Hearn's game. And uh, he can fill a couple seats in England. And he, you know, he's a sucker to me. Um, I ain't afraid of him. By the point, I fought three back-to-back -back tough guys. And I just want to go straight for the belt. I don't want to waste any more time. Uh, and I'm thinking more of my brains and my balls. When I get the WBA strap, um, if AJ is still pussy floating around, I'm more glad to knock out Dylan White after I beat Whoever it is that get WBA, if it's Fresno Kendo, now I'm hearing um, another guy's name. I ain't going to say his name yet. But uh, once I get the WBA strap, Dylan White more than happy to get the beats. In England. I don't even care. You know what I mean? But right now, my main goal is just get that belt. Because There's a lot of people in talks for that belt, though. You know that, right? Yeah. Like, I, I heard uh, Trevor Bryant versus Greg Corbin. Mm. Like, it's been offered, the fight's been offered to Greg Corbin to fight Trevor Bryant for that WBA regular. Mm. Uh, but Manuel Char posted on his Instagram that his B sample came back negative and Vada is confirming it. So maybe Manuel Char ends up staying with that belt. Mm. Uh, Vada confirmed that it's, it's negative? Yeah, it's oh. B sample. Okay, so I mean, it don't matter. I, I don't know what's on next. If Fresno Kindles is getting a boot, I don't know. I'm How is Fres, like... Aren't you at all upset that Fresh is even in the conference? Like, he ain't fought in like four years. It was How do you get a mandatory spot? It was, it was a lawsuit from I heard a year ago, and he won the lawsuit supposedly, and that's the reason why he's waiting for a shot. And he hasn't fought since because he didn't want to, you know, lose and not yeah. get a chance to fight for the belt. But uh, I know for a fact I'm next. So all of the guys are talking. Don King was trying to buy half my contract and all kind of shit. And he knew I was going to beat the brakes off. Uh, What's his name? Trevor. Trevor Bryan. And he was like, no, so they didn't want to fight. It's not a bullshit, man. You know what I mean? I'll be the first to tell you, you know, Don King didn't want me to fight Trevor Bryan unless he got half of my contract. Fresno Kendall had a lawsuit with WBA. That's why he's only still considered to fight the title. Uh, Manny Char, you know, the whole belt situation, that drug test. That was really it. And I know all the guys are talking, 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 talking. But I know for a fact, if Fresno Kendall will fight Trevor Bryan, I'm fighting for belt next. What sort of leverage you think that that WBA regular strap gives you because it doesn't give you a direct route at Joshua mm. but are you able to like I don't know headline maybe uh, defend it is it considered like yeah you know, you know the belt is still, it's still recognition you know you're still getting seven figures with that belt the main oh. thing is that the main thing with that belt is that you're going to be a, a priority you know other than other top 
strap holders. You know, if I fight, if I fight Dylan White, let's go to New York. I'm coming out second. Certain turns are gonna be met on my turns. I'm a champ. You know what I mean? So people think of it like he's going for the belt, not fighting for the guy for two guys. You know who did Dylan White fight? Dylan White fought Joseph Parker. That was it. Since he got knocked out by AJ, he fight nobody else. You know what I mean? So you know, a lot of these guys talking, and he then he wants to go and talk shit about Tyson Fury. He's a bum about the dude fought two guys that you know about. That's true. He fought two bums you never heard about. But he said, "Forget, I'm gonna go for the good stuff." You know, we all know, you know, ticket sell fight, and and WBC going that route because it's a good fight to sell pay view Tyson Fury versus Deontay. So he's going for the good stuff. I don't, I'm not mad at him. I get it. We're prize fighters, but I don't see Tyson Fury as no punk. He's he, he's putting his mouth for his money and going for the shot. So for Dylan White to call all the other bull crap, why he fight Ortiz? You talk all that junk. Why he fight Pula? I can tell you the reason why he fight Pula. I ain't going to Bulgaria. You know what I mean? So it's a, it's a, it's a lot of things that people will say, ah, I'm not doing They don't give you a reason. Every time I don't do something, I give you a reason. And usually I never turn out any fight. Bulgaria was the only fight I turned out because it's in Bulgaria. I ain't turned out Pulev. I turned out Bulgaria. And it's the reason why I've gone to hometowns and he not fighting a long time. They're going to send you. You know what I mean? You look at the last two fights with Triple G and Canelo. So they can Triple G won. I gave the Canelo. Sean Porter Garcia, Mr. Denny Garcia won. Sean Porter won. So if we have a cold decision like us in our home turf, what do you think about me going to Bulgaria? And God forbid, if I even knock him down one time and go to the score card, I'm give it to him. You know what I mean? So sometimes you gotta think what you bring, not your balls. Um, then I'm gonna get his though. You know, my I don't see him as no threat to me whatsoever. So once I get that belt, I'll knock the jerk chicken out of his ass. Because everybody's tied up, obviously. You got AJ. He's acting like he's waiting for Wilder April 13th. Oh, my God. That kid, that guy's such a drama queen. I mean, like, they keep selling fans, bull BS, and the fans and the media keep sucking it up. You know what I mean? It was supposed to be me first, really. Then it was Deontay. Then he ended up taking the older, shorter guy that's been, that had a loss and been wobbled a couple times in the fight. That's who he went for. So they give you the okie dog and switch it around until finally time runs out and they hurry and pick somebody that's a less threat. You know? Um... You know, cause that can do it. But that's kind of my point. Like, like everybody sees it as Eddie's waiting for the last minute to say Dillian White versus that's AJ. What, it is. what are you gonna do? But you can, you can stop that. Yeah, but I'm saying it was, it's not. I can stop it. Because and, and from what Dillian said in that interview, he said they offered you seven figures. You turned it down. Against who? For him. They, Eddie Hearn never made an offer for me against Dillian White. That's what I'm trying to say. It was just a talk. It was like, hey, would you fight Dylan White? I'm like, hell yeah, just not right now. I didn't hear never said me no contract. It was a talk. Because you know camera. Dylan White's the WBO mandatory after he beat Parker, because it'll still put you in a better position than a WBA regular. Yeah, who? But I'm just trying to tell you, it don't. At this point right now, I'd rather just get the belt first. That's how I feel right now on, at this point because Eddie Hearn did so much switch your rule and blah, blah. I'm not giving on my spot for no. I'm gonna get the regular belt. Talk match like you do, and then go on to the next possible thing. Dylan White been waiting for a re. Then I need to go beat Chisora first. Then they need to go beat uh, uh, Ortiz, if anything. Get the, get the hell out of my face. Well, he, there is rumors of him fighting Chisora in December, but again, he's saying, I'm fighting Chisora because you not, you know, he wants you. He's shit. He, need, well, he don't want me. I was going to talk that me and Eddie Hearn had on camera last time. That's how I don't want to fight Dylan White. Eddie Hearn never, if, I can send you a contract right now. It don't got Dylan White name on it. I can send you every email I got for Eddie Hearn and Magic There was no token ever about Dylan White fight other than the camera last time when we was in Chicago. It was never, it was never, never. And Dylan White just making, make, making talks and he's a big baby. I was, I was yo, I, yeah, he like, I'll come to England and move his ass right now. I like going through the backyard and just talking shit anyway. But wasn't you supposed to uh, do some, some Sky Sports or something? Yeah, supposedly from, remember we said Eddie Hearn was like, oh, because Dylan White said he going to do this and do that. That boy put So they canceled you? Correct. Cause was, but did they give you your money? Because that means he's fucking up your money. Yeah, no, I ain't get nothing for that. Oh, I ain't get nothing for that. Yeah. You know what I mean? So like I said before, when I see Dylan White, it's going to be proud. It's going to be some serious problem when I see that dude because he think everybody I playing with. He think this is just boxing. I ain't AJ. I would pick him up and drop him his big, big baboon looking head. Like he... I tell you, man, I leave the boxing, but everybody's on to piss me off in the sport. But like I said, I'm going to try to be as patient as possible as I can right now, do what I can do before I really start just jumping motherfuckers. Speaking of AJ, obviously, I'm sure you watched this fight with Pavek. And what was your thoughts? Because uh, um, the first three rounds. Actually, I didn't start watching until the third round. Oh. And um, the first two rounds, people tell me that I see the score crash and they had Pavek and winning. Then I glimpsed in and out, and I was doing something. And then uh, I came back around the fifth round. Pavek was getting the better in the sixth round. I seen him get clipped. He got hurt a little bit, and the ceremony stopped the fight. But what I seen, Pavekin running the gas. You know what I mean? If, and if you want to talk about heavyweights and Adamac and all that stuff, Adamac ain't a form of what he used to be, and Pavekin ain't a form of what he used to be. Uh, 
Vicky no longer on the goods. He's 39 years old. My father's 40 years old. Two-time cruiserweight champ. Fought Vitaly Klitschko. Got better footwork than Povetkin. Might not have the power like Povetkin. But a durable guy. So you talk about talent of two guys. One people cross guy, old guy. Povetkin's an old guy too. When you look at it, if you want to talk about age, 39, 41 years different. So like I said, 84, the older guy. Came out good the first couple rounds. And got tired. You know what I mean? Got hurt, got wobbled. But like I said, he don't want no fighting no young hungry guys. Man. He's fighting guys that he know that don't have a boxing pedigree. Who's young and hungry in your opinion? Me. Hands down. Me. Hungry. Dylan White said he's still hungry. I don't know what he's hungry for, but he been got caught once already. Uh, who else you got out there? We got Brian Jennings. He's going to be another hungry guy. He ain't fighting really young and hungry guys that got good footwork. He fighting guys that's really trying to, that he know he can gas out, probably imply his size on. But guys like me, he know you're not going to back me up. He know you're not going to back me up. So... Were you impressed with the use of his jab this fight? No, because it wasn't an authority, authority jab. It was more of a stay away, I'm tired jab. Stay back. Stay back. A good steady jab is like, I snap on you. Back the fuck up. Snap. Damn, people was calling him Mayweather the way he was stabbing oh Pavekka to the jab, stop, to the stop, body. Stop, stop, stop. Don't disrespect my brother. Stop. <laughs> yeah, they say he a heavyweight Mayweather stop, with the stab jab. Stop, 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 stop. That interview about the yo for shit. That, that jab was horrible. It wasn't even jab. It was like, it was like this. It was like, you know what I mean? Like, so like I said, Vivek was more tired than anything in that fight. Uh, AJ did what he had to do, but he got beat up for four or five rounds. Damn. But uh, it is what it is, man. This boxing game is just hilarious to me, man. Like I said, everybody's a bunch of freaking talkers. You know, most people don't know shit about boxing. Eddie Hearn out here selling dreams to everybody. And everybody's sucking it up. You know what I mean? And, uh, and that's what I'm saying. If I had the belt, regardless of regular belt, I wouldn't be playing no second fiddle nobody else on the car. You know what I mean? If you get that opportunity for the belt, when should that be taking place? This year or next year? Um, we heard talks of December 15th. Wow. Um, and maybe early January. So if it's December, you won't be attending Wilder Fury. Um, if it's in uh, if it's December 1st and I fight December 15th, yeah, I think I can make it. Oh, really? Yeah, I think I'd, I'd come out for that. Okay. I don't think two days is gonna kill me. Uh, three days, a little jet lag, but uh, I don't think it would kill me to go out just check it out. Um, go out there with the team, you know what I mean? I'm good. You know, I got family in Vegas too, so, you know. Um, with Fox News and, uh, excuse me, with Fox Sports and Showtime's new deal, and they're even mentioning Fox pay-per-view, I know you said you only got a two-fight deal with the zone. Mm. Are you going to, I guess, entertain offers from Showtime and Fox? Have they reached out already? Yeah, I heard, I heard some things about Fox and Showtime already. Um, I had talks with... Uh, Espinosa. Um, like I said, you know, we kind of, we didn't leave on bad terms. It's just that they had a different idea what they want to do. And uh, I'm a fighter, so I made a decision for me that was best for me. But uh, Showtime was still What did great. they want to do? Put you right in with Deontay? No. Because it looks like they're looking for heavyweights for no, Deontay. No, 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 no. They wanted me. They wanted a two, they wanted a two fight deal, two fights. I mean, I had to tell before that with the whole Adam, with Adam Cornack situation oh, last year. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But uh, no, they talked about a uh, three-five deal, and Beyonce will be in the three-five deal. I said the beginning numbers, you know, and it was like co-main event or some crap like that. But, um, it just was that entertaining, you know what I mean, compared to what you know the zone mm -hmm. had on the table. Yeah, yeah. But I feel like once I get that belt, and uh, they'll figure out a way to, uh, I think, to step it up. You know what I mean? But I think my main, my main thing really is gunning for AJ. You know what I mean? I think AJ is. Uh, more scared than anything at this point. Now, how do you, I guess, secure that when this, when you got only one more fight? So you're going to have to I like... Mean, I mean, remember, when, you, when you're a free agent, you're a good free agent, you're more of an asset than a liability. So my thing is keep winning, keep doing what I'm doing. And then, like I said before, there wasn't a time where I, the more I, I was winning with Showtime, Asio came to the table. It was kind of limbo by their whole situation network-wise. The whole boxing program is in limbo. Limbo, limbo right now with HBO. So it wasn't that HBO... They didn't want to work with me. They didn't know what, what direction they were going to. And then Showtime with the zone came back on the table, and the zone made a better offer. So when we go, when it finishes two fight deal, then we go back table. So it's a better offer. That's all it is. And I'm just like, you gotta play small. We're not, we're not. I'm not shitting on the zone. I think the zone's a great, a great platform as of right now. And Showtime has always been a great platform. I just felt like the zone had more to offer at this point right now. And uh, that's really what it's at right now. You know, I just don't like the way how Eddie Hearn do certain things. You know. Pit the pat to the tent around the corner. But he's a promoter. And his uh his goose is uh his agent. 
So uh, he just signed a new one, right? Hopefully, is what he's assuming in uh, Alexander Usyk. All the belts in the cruiserweight division, they're going to be doing a pay-per-view with Tony Bellew, but we know Tony Bellew was a heavyweight. Mm -hmm. Would you take that fight if offered? Because he signed with Eddie and DeZone with the intentions mm -hmm. of getting an AJ fight and moving up to heavyweight. He was supposed to automatically move up to heavyweight, but they offered him the Tony Bellew fight at cruiserweight. Would you entertain Alexander Usyk as his first heavyweight fight if they offered that to you? For what? I mean, because he's got legacy, right? He's cruiserweight undisputed, moving up. I beat up a cruiserweight. Plus, he's what? Two two gold medal, two gold medals? I beat up a cruiserweight. He's a cruiserweight. I'm a heavyweight. It's a different story. What you did in cruiserweight, you some cruiserweight. I'm finding a two-time cruiserweight champion, undisputed cruiserweight champ right now. He's legendary. Let's hear what they say after I beat this dude. You see what I'm trying to say? So, like I said, it's not because the cruiserweight with him would do good. Adam Mack moved cruiserweight. He got his ass off. David Hay moved cruiserweight, did all right, got his ass with. So I'm not, I'm not gonna entertain it because I mean, no sense. I'm gonna beat him, and then when I leave me again, you know what I mean, go right to, go right to the top. Sometimes you gotta focus what's in front of you and forget about all the chitty chatter on the side. Keep your blindfolds on and head straight. All that shit will be later on. Just go straight for the title at this point. I fought Joe Watson, fought Mars Rock, fought Joe Dupas. Straight for the title. That's it. Um, bacon on the cheeseburger. Man, double bacon on the cheeseburger, man. Double fucking bacon. What's in your playlist? Is it what you're listening to while you work out? Or you got a separate playlist when you're driving in your car? I'm um, pretty much here. I'm working out. Uh, okay, a lot so of you... dance music. Okay. To EDM, you know, relax, trance. Just have to keep me zoned out, man. It may keep me relaxed, cause uh, you know I'm always, I'm always thinking, always working. So I gotta kind of shut my brain off when that kind of music kind of keeps me, you know, mellowed out. Cause I think about rap, man. The first person I might punch him in the face. So. <laughs> Obviously, you being in the business, being with Eddie, this is my last question. Um, where, where do you think Joshua goes? April 13th, the venue's book is Wembley. What do you imagine is going to happen? I think he's going to fight Dylan White. Okay. I, I think he's going to fight Dylan White. Um, AJ's happy making the money he's at. He doesn't want to come to America anytime soon. Um, he's scared. Him, him and Eddie Hearn are scared shit of Deontay Wilder. Um, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just... I, even a lot of fans from England are telling me they're tired of the way how AJ and them are doing things. They're selling them dreams, you know, they're collecting money. What, what excuse you give them this time? Because, I mean, we seen on zone Chris Mannix, he kept it real. He was like, look, Deontay's accepted everything, he's done everything, and it's AJ's side that doesn't that's want to fight. They said it on the tele. I didn't expect them to say that, That's what that, I'm though. saying. That's what I'm saying. I mean, I, I've been told people that AJ scared shit of Deontay. Eddie Hearn don't want that problem. You know what I mean? The minute Deontay touched that boy, chin is going to be over. You know what I mean? Like, I, I, AJ's so stiff. He's so robotic. You know what I mean? But so, you didn't think he was loose of this? No, nah, oh, man. No, I He no, was on his toes this fight. He tried to go. This is something. The boy, the boy got some boxes, though, of course. He, he definitely ain't, like, was on but, his toes But this he ain't fight. no boxer. He ain't slick. You know what the fuck I be doing for 12 rounds? He can't do that shit. I don't care nobody. He cannot do that shit. I be beating dudes with plan A. I ain't gonna plan B. Just walk them down beat them up. Get them the fuck out. I start really getting... I be dropping my hand in front of people making them slick. Play with them. Having fun. I'm telling you, when I get that, I'm gonna put hands on them. You're gonna see a difference. And then I'm gonna chill like... Mm. When you see him wobble like that, does that... That Motivate you, or do you know? I already know he's there. He's been dropped in amateurs, been dropped in the pros and and, and amateurs. Uh, been dropped in sparring, and like three, four cans back to back. He's been dropped. You know what I mean? So you know, I, 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 I heard it. I seen clips of videos of him. So it's like I'm not surprised. The thing about it though, he's fighting guys that don't come forward all the time. But Vec is trying to box because he's big, he's a bigger, smaller guy. He fought a motherfucker like me. I'm coming for 12 rounds. I'm getting his ass every three minutes. In his behind, I'm throwing punches. Vec had a tough time getting past that jab, but yeah, you say but, it was lazy. Man, it was a lazy ass jab. Vec was when he got when he got tired, the fifth, sixth round. Every time I get past the jab. I say after the third. I, he get, he, I gave him all three rounds. The first all right, three. Well, Vec is 230. He. 82 for 5, 300 pounds. We ain't stopping this motherfucking brick wall. I'm bringing it. <laughs> <laughs> Big baby, thank you so much, man. See you in Chicago. Know, brother, baby. take it easy. TPV family, yes, yes, YouTube has been cutting funding to uh, their channels as of late and with net neutrality uh, going through its process. The internet is changing. If you want to keep your favorite channel intact, coming up with tons of content, and plus get hours and hours of extra content, head over to patreon.com forward slash the boxing voice. Uh, to become a member of the TBV family and help support the channel. Peace.